What's up everybody? So we're back out in the shop with another Shop Talk Tuesday and in this episode we are starting the first build series for 2022. Now I'm really excited about this series. I think that it's going to turn into a really really awesome knife and I'm excited to see what y'all think about it whenever y'all actually see how I kind of designed it and whatnot. But I gave y'all a few different options here. I gave you three different Karambit style knives and then one camp knife and the Karambit style or the insanity build style Karambit, the cleaver styled Karambit, and then the Kukri styled Karambit. So out of those three, the one that went out from those was the Kukri inspired Karambit. But y'all actually went for the camp knife. That was the most voted for knife out of all of them was the camp knife, which I was kind of surprised because I thought that y'all would want something kind of crazy like the Karambit style knife. And I was really surprised, but I think it's cool because I've wanted to do a camp knife for a while. It was just a camp knife. Now, of course, the original design versus what I'm actually going to be making slightly different. Now, the original design, which was this one right here, this knife was based on a collaboration knife that I made with Jeff Peters. I told you all about him and the video where I gave you these options. Him and I did a collaboration knife, which was this knife right here. We did this knife as a collaboration. You know, he forged out the blade and did the bevels. And I did the sharpening, did the handle, did the sheath, did all that stuff on it. And... It was really cool because that was whenever I had just started actually making knives and trying my hand at this. And I designed this knife based on that particular one because that's the, the number one knife that I use. I use that knife literally all the time. It goes all over the place with me. I've got a few different EDCs that I carry, but that's the number one knife. And I just love it, but there's a few things that I would change about it now that I know as much as I know about handle profiles and ergonomics and, and things that I would do just slightly different. And so what I did was I took this particular profile and I turned it up just a notch to actually match the type of things that I know now. And that birthed this knife. So a li little bit like different profile, but it's the same handle length, the same blade length. A few things that I changed was of course, handle profile to meet the ergonomics a little bit better. If you look right here, you can see where that original spine came up to. I dropped it down about three eighths of an inch just to put this in a better line for where your handle holds it and the tip of the edge. You know, it just flows a little bit better with how you'll actually hold and grip the knife. And then of course I added the little swedge to the top here. Now this knife, I'm gonna focus on making it nice and clean. Now, we're gonna have a little bit of the, the texture from the steel that we're gonna be using in the Ricasso area, but when it comes to the bevels and everything, we're just gonna do a nice, like we're gonna take it up to probably 600 grit, and then we're gonna acid etch it and stone wash it, but the bevels are gonna be nice and clean. It's gonna be clean lines, everything like that. We're not gonna do some crazy texture or anything like that, and uh, this is gonna be just a nice overall, just great fighter style camp knife and I'm really excited about it. The steel that we're gonna be using, of course, I've been using it a lot lately. I'm definitely gonna use it on this one, is this 5160. I want the thickness from this and I want the, the tapered tang. And I want just a little bit of that, that pitted texture so that it kind of resembles so this knife right here, this is that chopper that we made, how it just has that little bit of texture on it, but then it still has really nice clean lines. That's what I'm going for with this particular build. I'm excited about this one. I think it's going to be awesome. And who knows, it might turn into my next EDC. So we'll see how it goes. Y'all let me know if y'all think that this was the right direction to go with the profile and the, the slight adjustments that I did to it. <sighs> I'm excited about this one. I think it's going to be awesome. So we'll see how it goes. Guys, let's go ahead get into the forge, light it up, get this piece flattened, get that distal taper 
brought back up to center to where it matches the tip and everything. Let's go ahead and let's knock it out. At this point, people tend to have a few different questions. So for one, they'll ask, 
why did I only drill these three holes when I already have these areas marked? Well, it's pretty simple. I knew exactly where I wanted the choil, this hole, and this hole, but I'm not 100% set in where the pins are gonna be, so I'm gonna do that after I finish the profile, and then I'll kinda play with it and figure out exactly where I want them. The next thing is, well, why didn't I forge it to profile? Well, because I didn't want to. I wanted to go ahead and get everything straight, which you can see right there. That follows all the way through. This distal taper goes all the way down. It's nice and centered all the way down. So I accomplished that part. That's what I really wanted to get done. Other than that, I didn't really feel like forging this whole entire thing to profile because 5160 really sucks to forge. For this particular build, I didn't find it necessary, but for a few builds that we have coming in the future, we'll have plenty of forging. For right now, let's go ahead, let's finish profiling this 36 grit belt. This is a used belt. You do not want to use a brand new belt to go through and profile something like this because that hard 90 degree angle right there will rip off a whole lot of nice grit off your belt. So I always use a slightly worn belt for this particular process. You don't have to if you don't want to, but that's what I choose to do. Right, guys let's go ahead and wrap this shop talk Tuesday up here I am absolutely loving the profile for this I mean what do y'all think about that so a few things that I want to explain about how we're doing the profile here now of course I added this little hook here to really lock your hand in whenever you're gonna be swinging this at something I mean that's going nowhere between the little finger choil that little hook around the pinky right there, it is just going to be super just confident chopping whenever you do this. I mean, I am absolutely going to love this. Now, we are going to be adding jimping to the spine, but one of the big things that changed from the, the original profile to this profile was the fact that I wanted to go with steel this thick and have this taper and have everything like this. If I would have not done the swedge or the false edge, this, this piece right here, if I would not have done this, what would have happened is the spine, being over a quarter of an inch thick, 
would have just made it to where the tip for like a Tonto style blade would have been just too broad and it wouldn't have been a very stabby tip. It would have been a very broad, very wide tip. So I did this so that whenever we grind in this bevel up here and then grind these bevels up to it, it'll thin out the tip a lot. It'll make this a lot lighter towards the tip. We'll have a really broad area where the ricasso is and it'll make the plunge line stand out super awesome but we'll have that that weight towards the center lighter tip lighter tang it should be super wieldable for how beefy it's gonna be but I'm really excited about this one and I'm wondering what do y'all think about it let me know in the comment section down below do you think this was the right direction to go with this do you think that I made the right changes to this I'm really interested to hear what y'all say. Guys, that's the end of this one. If you would, give this video a thumbs up, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there, and I will catch y'all on Friday.